Hey, welcome to the gear room. It's been a long time. I just used my brand new remote control, which is cool. So, oh, it's really working. Cool, awesome, hi, welcome back. Um, cool things to talk about. So first of all, forgive the mess. Let's get right into it. By the way, just back from summer vacation in Cali. Um, let's get into it. So, there's a, a Tim Marcus in San Francisco builds amps called Milkman Amps. And you know, I think the the one to have for for a guitarist like me would be his Milkman Creamer. Uh, a friend of mine, Fernando, has two of his amps, and that's that's how I got to play them and got to know them. And anyway, they're hand built and they're they're not cheap. But I just got a ridiculous deal on one. You know, one of those deals that's too good to pass up. So I bought one. Um, it's right there. And we're going to do a demo of it today. Um, but I wanted to explain a few things about it. So it's it's kind of a blackface fender slash tweed. But, but for it to sound really good, the way I like amps to sound, it's a non-master volume amp. You have to crank it up to probably around 12... Maybe like about two o'clock is where it starts to sound good. Three o'clock would be sort of the ideal breakup, where the where the output tubes are being pushed and the speakers being pushed, so that it delivers that beautiful sound. And remember, amplifiers are meant to be played loud. Um, tube amplifiers, especially non-master volume tube amplifiers, don't sound good unless they're really pushed. It's like two different instruments. Playing quietly, they don't work. Playing really loud where they're being pushed, that's when they work, that's when you get controlled feedback, you get these beautiful harmonics, but you can only do that in a band setting where you're playing really loud, not in a bedroom setting. So, to try to compensate for that, what I've done to this amp, I took the 12AX7 tube out of the phase inverter slot, the PI slot, and I replaced it with a 12AU7. The 12AU7 delivers a lot less power than the 12AX7, so in effect, it's sending less power to the output tubes, so you have to turn the amp up more to get the volume up, and when you're doing that, you start to push the output tubes and they start to break up. So by, by switching out the 12AX7 in the PI slot, the phase inverter slot, for a 12AU7, which has quite a bit less power than the 12AX7, that tube is not pushing the output tubes as much, therefore you gotta crank the volume up to get enough volume to, to get it up, and then they start to overdrive, which is kind of what I've done here. But I'm not gonna play it clean because I'd have to play it really loud for it to sound good, uh, but I'm gonna play it with pedals. So if, as you can maybe see a little bit over there, um, on the floor. There's a whole bunch of pedals laying around because I've been testing all these pedals. Um, the Analog Man King of Tone, the Klon KTR, um, and, and everything. So what I think to my ears sounds the best, at least at the volumes I'm playing at, is the Cali 7, the Origin Cali 76 um, compressor going into the BK Butler 5-knob tube driver and then the the Ibanez, the original Ibanez Tube Screamer. I have a vintage one from like the 80s or 70s, whenever they came out. Mine's a really old one. And then um, I'm using the Dunlop EP1 Echoplex Delay and the Mini Vent 2 is a kind of a, a Leslie simulator. And it has it has its own tremolo and reverb on the amp. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? I've got everything ready to go, I think, so let's turn on... Actually, so that is the clean sound. Let's tune up this little puppy. I should have tuned in advance, right? Okay. So that's already 
pretty loud, but it's still not loud enough. You'd have to really go like this. <laughs>
et mon toxine.